In this video, I'm going to explain how to calculate compound interest using formulas in Excel. How to do that when you have compounding at quarterly or every n months. And then I will also explain the comparison between compound and simple interest, how to calculate both of them and how that compares over a period of time. We're also going to look at what happens to the compounding amount at various interest rates. How to look at compounding when you have regular payments and finally get the reverse of compounding that is you know the end value you want to know what would be the beginning value let's go let's say you have borrowed five thousand dollars at the rate of five percent interest for 10 years you want to know what would be the compounded value at the end compound interest is defined as interest on top of interest so for 5% interest for the first year, the value would be 5% times 5,000, so 250. But on the second year, you're not paying just 250, but you're also paying 5% interest on this 250 as well. So that's where compounding comes in. It is interest on top of interest. To calculate the compound value at the end, we can use this general formula, which is principal times 1 plus rate of interest to the power of number of years. And you can see that 5,000 borrowed at 5% interest for 10 years would become 8,144.47. If I just want to know the interest portion alone, I can take this number, subtract the original amount from it to get the interest value alone. You can also use the FV function in Excel, future value function, to calculate the compounded value directly. This is how you write it. FV of rate, N per means number of terms, so number of years there, and PMT, we can ignore that, so just comma, and PV is the amount that you're borrowing. As you're borrowing the money, you should put a negative sign and put the value there. This is also going to come back with the same result. Pop quiz. What do you think $5,000 at 8% becomes after 100 years? Take a guess and put your answer in the comments. I'll show you the exact value at the end of the video. Let's go. Now let's look at the scenario where the compounding is not done once a year, but every quarter. Here I have put the input value as 4. If you want, you can change this and calculate what the result would be if we compound six times a year or 12 times a year. To calculate the compounded value at the end, again, we can use the same formula, principal times open bracket one plus rate of interest. Now the rate of interest is APR or annualized. As we are compounding four times per year, we divide that interest rate with four to find out the interest rate per quarter to the power of, again open bracket, number of years and as we are compounding four times per year, multiply that with four. So notice the difference between this formula and the formula above. In this formula, we are dividing the number of terms and multiplying the number of terms in the power part. You'll get the answer as 8,218. Now if you compare this number with that number, you can see that if you compound only once per year, you pay 8144, whereas if you compound four times per year, you're going to pay roughly $70 more. You can calculate the interest portion alone by subtracting the principal value from it. You can also use the FV formula for this as well. We can say FV rate is five divided by the number of terms. N per is number of years times number of compounding per year. PMT, you can ignore that and PV is negative of the amount that you're borrowing. And again, you'll get the same answer 8218. You can use the same idea and figure out what happens if you're compounding every N months. Here I have put the formula already. As we are doing compounding every N months, we basically take the N value, divide that with 12 and then do the whole thing. You'll get the answer as 8266. If I'm compounding once every two months, usually when you borrow for a mortgage or a car loan or something, compounding is done, for example, once a month. And this is how that values would look like. Now let's understand what we mean by the compounding effect. 
or how compound interest compares with simple interest over a period of time. Again, we are going to borrow $5,000 at 5% interest, but now for 20 years. Over the course of 20 years, my simple interest remains the same, $250 every year. On the other hand, my compound interest on year 1 is same as my simple interest. Here I am assuming compounding is done once per year. But you can see that at the end of the 20th year, my simple interest still is $250, but my compound interest is $631. So almost two and a half times more than simple interest. To calculate all these values, what I have done is first I have generated a range of 20 years using the sequence function. So sequence of 20 gives me all the year values. My original value remains 5000 all this way. And to calculate the compounded value, here I'm using the FV function and where the N per E is, I'm pointing to the range that has the 20 numbers. Excel 365 has this beautiful spill functionality and as I want the values for 20 years, it calculates all the 20 compounded values. As you can see, at the end of 10th year, we are at 8144. And at the end of 20th year, we are at 13,266. Here I have visualized that information, both simple interest and compound interest. And you can see that the compound interest grows quite rapidly as we pass the time. You may want to understand what kind of an effect interest rate would have on the compounding. So here I'm again borrowing $5,000 for 20 years, but now I want to calculate what would that amount look like at various interest rates. This kind of thing is particularly helpful if you're comparing quotations from different banks or you're trying to finance a project or an initiative internally at various interest rates. So here I have generated all the 20 interest rates from one through 20% using the same sequence function again, but this time by dividing the sequence with 100. So we'll have all the numbers one to 20% and I can calculate the amounts using the same FV function, this time using the spill range on the rate attribute of the FV function. You can see that at the lowest of 1% interest, my compounded value at the end of 20 years is just 6,000. On the other hand, if we end up borrowing at a very high percentage like 20%, our 5,000 quickly becomes 191,000 in just 20 years. This is what people mean when they say compounding is one of those mind-bending concepts. And as time passes, the effect of compounding just keeps compounding. One of the more common scenarios when it comes to compounding is regular investing or regular payments. So for example, let's say you want to save $500 per month at 8% interest rate for the next 20 years. Here I have calculated the value, but I'm going to delete that and we are going to do this again. So to calculate the future value of all of these regular payments, you can use the same FV function again. FV rate is that 8%, N per is 20. Now, as we are doing monthly investment, not yearly investment, I want to multiply the number of years with 12. And as the rate of interest is 8% per year, but we are doing monthly investments, I'm gonna divide this with 12. And then comes the PMT, how much you're paying every month. You're paying 500, so you can point to that and close the bracket and that's going to show you 294. Now, one of the limitations or quirky things about these FV and all the other financial functions in Excel is any amount you put, they kind of assume the other way around. As you're giving this money to the bank or investment firm, you want to put the negative sign here. And this way, what the result tells you is how much you're going to get back at the end. So I'm giving 500 now, I'm going to get 294,000 at the end of 20 years. You can calculate the amounts at the end of each year using a table like this. Again, the logic is simple. We are going to use sequence function to generate all the 20 years. The original value will be at the end of each year, that year times number 12 times 500. The compounded value on the other hand, we can use the FV function and calculate like this. 
and when you graph these things you can see that your investment amount is growing linearly but thanks to compounding your end value goes in a compounded fashion as all of these are dynamic i can simulate and see what happens if the interest rate changes so for example from eight percent we are down to six percent then our amount would be down to 231 on the other hand you are able to find a particularly good deal at 10 percent then you can expect to save 379,000 at the end of 20th year the last concept i want to cover is reverse of compounding so you have the end result and you wanted to know what would be the beginning value so let's say you're planning to save up for your daughter's wedding which you expect to happen in about 20 years and you think that's going to cost you hundred thousand dollars and you are expecting the rate of interest to be five percent the duration is 20 years so you want to figure out how much you should save today while i'm going to explain the answer feel free to pause here and calculate it yourself and post the answer in the comments for this kind of a thing we can use the pv function present value present value is kind of like an opposite of the future value function it tells you what should be the current value if you know what the future value is so pv rate is five percent n per is 20 and pmt we could we're gonna ignore that and fe is the hundred thousand dollars we are gonna take in future when you enter this formula you're gonna see the amount you need to save as 37688 this is in negative formatting because you need to give this money to the bank today if you want to take hundred thousand in future you might be wondering okay i don't have 37 now but i want to know what is it that i need to save every year if i can expect the values to be compounding and the end result should be hundred thousand in that case you can use the pmt function so we say pmt rate is five percent number of payments is 20 and i'm going to ignore the pv part and fv is this value this is going to tell you that every year you need to save three thousand dollars if you want to get hundred thousand dollars at the end of it you can see that if i'm saving three thousand per year i'm roughly putting in sixty thousand and the rest of the forty thousand comes in through the compounding effect we can also calculate what is the amount you need to save every month if you want to go for a monthly kind of thing i'm not going to answer this one here i leave this to you as homework Figure it out and leave a comment with your answer for this. So remember that pop quiz? Let's try this out. $5,000 at 8% for 100 years. Now the number is too big that my Excel cannot even show it in this cell. So I'm going to make it big and there is our answer. Almost $11 million. 10.99 to be precise. What was your guess? And if you want to learn a little bit more about finance and accounting concepts using Excel, check out the playlist that shows up on the screen. I'll catch you there. Bye-bye.